Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Field Trips. My name is Robert Field, for those of you that don't know me, and boy, do I have a treat for you guys. So we are back with the boys from Fish Village, the Fish Village crew. We go all over the world looking for fishing trips that we can offer for clients just like you. And today, this time, we've got something extra special. We are heading down to Mexico. <laughs> Look at that, right there! <laughs> yeah! Got him, got him! So we're going down to a trip that Fish Village already offers on Cedros Island. This is a small island, about 150 square miles, 60 miles off the coast of Mexico, off the Baja Peninsula. This is Cedros Kayak Fishing Lodge. It's gonna be incredible, we'll tell you more about the trip, tell you more about the island here in a bit, but first things first, we're here at the CBX, the Cross Border Express in Ote Mesa, California, right on the Mexican border. We're about to go through kind of custom security, that sort of thing, walk across the bridge, over to Mexico, get on a little six-seater plane that we'll be taking, a little puddle jumper over to the island. Got to go through this. I don't think I can film much in security. I don't want to uh, upset the Mexican authorities, so uh, we will see you guys when we land on Cedros Island. This is going to be epic. The fishing's incredible there. Get ready for a good one, you guys. Here we go. And this is gonna be our ride to Cedros Island. It's pretty nice. It's definitely the smallest plane I've ever flown on. So new experiences all the way around. This adventure oh, begins now. Woo! Oh, yeah. Where's the hot fire attendant? Where's the co-pilot? Yo, so yo. Yeah, 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 mama, mama. Should I close this window? No, yeah. Look at this, I get to be a co-pilot today. What's this? Don't press the red button. This is a shotgun. <laughs> so ejects the machine, machine gun. Ejects the seat. <laughs> Being my very first experience in an airplane this small, I can't help but feel a little nervous. Luckily for me, our pilot Ronco at least looks like he knows what he's doing, and the beautiful views serve as the perfect distraction. As we fly over countless gorgeous islands at over 180 miles an hour, they remind me of breadcrumbs that we'll use to find our way home in just three short days. And yep, that's a baby volcano. Now let me take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about our crew and why we're currently crammed inside of this glorified paper airplane. Mike Ponce is the CEO and founder of Fish Village, a company that offers adventure fishing trips around the world. <laughs> My life just changed. <laughs> He's the proverbial man with the plan. Mike figures out how to turn our favorite fishing trips into packages that we can offer to anglers just like you. He also handles most of the back-end technology with our good friend Joe Martinez, who had to miss out on this trip because he was cage diving with great whites. Then there's Nick Gadois, who serves as technical director and is our go-to guy for anything tech, boat, or tackle related. Think gear nerd, but with a booming voice and a heart of gold. He's a Northern Cali boy who spent a decade homesteading in yurts, and now he runs a kayak tour operation called Kayak Trinidad. You guys might remember Mike and Nick from our expeditions to Alaska, Australia, and New Zealand. Then we have Jesse Landry, who came on a couple Fish Village trips, hit it off with Mike, and took him up on the offer to fill Joe's slot last minute. He's another California native that is intimately familiar with most of our target species. He's the new guy, but he's fitting right in. <laughs> and most of you know me. I'm here to knock a few new species off my list and capture the experiences along the way. Co-pilot! We're en route to Cedros Island, a small chunk of land jutting up from the Pacific about halfway between Tijuana and Cabo off the Baja Peninsula. The island is almost entirely barren and dry, and fresh water is routinely in short supply for the small towns that dot the island. The surrounding ocean, on the other hand, is teeming with life. Despite being only 134 square miles with a population of just around 1,500, Cedros Island is the third largest seaport in Mexico, which is due entirely to the salt trade. 
Salt from the salt flats on the mainland is stored on the island to be loaded onto massive cargo ships before being distributed across the globe. This is the only real source of income for the island, but it's a massive industry. While most of the island is plagued by drought, cold water currents flowing past the north end of the island create a near constant blanket of fog. Local plants have learned to collect this moisture from the air, and the north end is the only part of the island where trees are able to survive. The flight is two hours long, but it flies by as I take in the landscape from the air. Before I know it, the trail of fog coming off the island's northern coast begins to emerge on the horizon. That was a new experience for you. Go ahead and check that one off the bucket list. We got a pro here. Dropped us in soft as butter. I was positive he was not going to do that. Dude, there's Jeff. That was solid. Look at him waiting for us. Yeah! We got the whole crew. Look at this. That's a roadside Woo! service. Jeffrey! And we have arrived. That's great. Yeah. Good, good ride? Good. Yeah, yeah. The landing out, this part was eventful. That was exciting. A little bouncy. Did it, did it look a little funny coming in? We've seen you jabbing, so I'm like, oh, it must be windy, man, because he's like... It is ripping from there, yeah. I've never been on a plane like that. It was completely smooth till right there. Yeah. I've definitely never gotten off an airplane, like, had the airplane taxi me to my vehicle. Pretty, uh, pretty legit. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, we're sideways. Yeah, we're going down like this. I've never come into a runway like, no? Nah, he, he didn't even, yeah, he's, that was not his first rodeo, yeah. for sure. I'm pretty, yeah, he was flying with his knees half the trip. music, please. Yeah. And we made it! Cheers, boys! Yes! To Mexico! 10,000 feet pretty quick. The landing was definitely the most exciting part of the flight, 100%. You guys ready to go? Yeah. yeah let's do it. We're ready, man. I'm fishing eight yellows today by... Nice. So, fun times. You know, terrible. This wind was not going on. I'll look at the weather report right now. Carrie sent it for me. So, but we'll head back to the pad, go chill for a little bit, get our stuff ready for tomorrow. And I'll Perfect. figure out the best stuff. Either we're going north or we're going to Benitos or we're going to Tibidad, maybe. I haven't done Benitos yet, so that'd be fun. Yeah, man. I hope the weather lays down because the fishing's been good over there on the Wheatus baits, the Wheatus plastics. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, we'll sit around. Maybe I'll fire up the fireplace. You and... guys have to refuel? You can go back. I think it's good mileage, man. Real good mileage. It's a cool plane. Just yeah, and Rocco's mileage. cool too, right? Yeah, chill. Yeah, he's, he's super cool. cool. He walked us right through, man. It was no worries. Oh yeah, yeah no, he knows everyone. Yep. He's like one of the head dispatchers there. Like people do not mess around with Rocco. Here, Jeff, Jeff no Mariani of Cedros Kayak Fishing will be our host and fishing guide for the week. He's a SoCal native that fell in love with the incredible fishing around Cedros and eventually just had to own a piece of it himself. His lodge is world class, and we'll be using his two pongas to mothership kayaks to different hotspots around the island, targeting everything from yellowtail to calico bass to California sheephead. Oh, dude, it's a monster, bro! Jeff is a chill, down to earth guy that grew up in the surfing and fishing culture of Southern California. And from the very first minute we meet him, I can already tell that this guy knows his stuff. This is the salt factory. About 1,500 people live here year round. That thing runs pretty much 360 days a year. It's Mexico's third biggest port. They export uh, roughly 7 million tons of salt annually all around the world. So five miles roughly over to uh, the town of El Pueblo. That's where my house is. And Jeff lives in the biggest town on the island, which is appropriately named El Pueblo. In Spanish, that simply translates to the town. El Pueblo is a dusty, dry place, but Jeff's Lodge stands out like an oasis. We're greeted by his friendly local crew and some fresh, homemade Mexican food. There's snacks, she's already got the burritos out, so feel free to sit down and have a little snack real quick before you mess with your tackle, whatever you'd like. like we're gonna have dinner about 6.30 tonight. Okay. Um, she's cooking us, I think, uh, tacos de pescado, fish tacos. Yeah, perfect. With some fresh yellows from today, so. Yeah, welcome. Glad to have you here. Look at Mike already going to town. Mmm. Fish Village video wouldn't be complete without some weird Mike eating noises. <laughs> 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 
nothing, not huge, you know, but 10 to 15s. And like, they were great. These guys were tripping out. All the things that make me happy will make you happy. Trust me. I know we, it. What we want to show is we want to show that this place has diversity. We want to show that when plan A doesn't work, plan B doesn't work, there's plan C, D, and E. All day long. That, that was what I was, I think that's what I, I love because about this most was everywhere we went, it like blew out. We're like, all right. 15 gone. Minutes, we'll Keep be moving. Here. Perfect. Gone. Like we I'll load break, everything break down the pongas and move. Like I, yeah. I do not stay anywhere. I'm not comfortable. It's, I start getting a weird feeling. F it. I call my boys over. Load us up. We're out of here. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Uh, so this is the brand new one we just got this year. Nice. Good okay, with the Merc. Man, these are like a different these are, yeah, planet yeah. than the pongas I'm used to. Yeah. So <laughs> this is our garage area. This is where we do all our tackle tinkering. You guys set up all your rods and reels and everything right there. We'll bring the crates out too so you can have all your stuff, but you just spread on out on all these tables and just help yourself. Feel free, anything you need, okay? Awesome. Perfect. Here's the back house, three bedrooms, two baths back here, so three guys will be here, and then Mikey's in the far back. Oh, Mike's got a special place, so, huh? Kitchen, man, this is, we keep beer and fish in this fridge. Just and That's all I need, so. So two guys will be right here, so this is one room, this is the bathroom these two guys share. Robert, you could be in this room. There's a bathroom in there. Rockets. Mikey, Mikey will be back in here. Sweet, in sweet bathroom. Yep. It's locked, but I'll get it opened up for you. Oh, Mike's in here, bedroom, bathroom in here. There's a bedroom, bathroom upstairs. We don't need it this time, but this is our water. So try to conserve. There's a little bit of a shortage right now because it hasn't rained in a long time. So that's our, one of our tanks. This is our other tank right here. This one's pretty much full. We get more water tomorrow. Okay. But just try to take the shorter showers as you can. Sure. Here's our osmosis system, just so you guys can see it. UV protection and everything. So you can brush your teeth with the water. Don't have to worry about a thing. Flush your paper like normal, like at home. No oh, worries. That's awesome. Um, I make rice and coffee with it when she's not looking. I've been using it for over four years. Zero, zero issues. Everyone that's mm -hmm. come, so no issues. Good to know. This is where we barbecue. Here's the pizza oven. We kind of hang out out here, but uh, there's a lot of bugs, so I don't really serve food until it gets dark. Pizza oven, little garden here. Nice. Tomatoes, so and it, some peppers uh, and stuff. You were just starting to think about this when you were yeah, here. No, you, super you told fun. me about what you wanted to do. I use the fish blood from the cooler and everything just grows real awesome, good. Man. Yeah, our fireplace over here. Wow. So this is where we hang out in the evenings. I got some patio furniture coming down on the boat in December. Come on in and meet Lulu and you'll see where this is where we do all of our eating. There's a fridge up here. It's kind of like just help yourself style, you know, because you're at my pad, so. This is Lulu. Hi, Lulu. Hola. Hola, mucho gusto. So here's where we eat. This is where she prepares everything. Here's the fridge. So if you need drinks and stuff, you help yourself. This is where all we, you know, just yeah. like a normal normal house. Perfect. My room up here, my daughter's room, and then a bathroom for when, if you're up here, we're eating dinner or whatever, and you guys need to use the restroom, feel free to help yourself. This is so sweet, man. Other than that, like, that's basically the two cent tour, you know? Mm -hmm. Welcome, and thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to showing you guys a good time. I'll take a look at the weather and get that all figured out. All right, guys. Well, how rad is this place? Here we are at Cedro's Kayak Fishing Lodge. Jeff Mariani just gave us the kind of the quick tour. Jeff actually holds the world record for the largest broomtail grouper ever caught. If you watch the Panama series, you're familiar with broomtail grouper. They do get them here as well. And he hooked into a gigantic fish, a 108.8 pound broomtail grouper on a bass setup. And even crazier, my good buddy Kevin Nakata was cleaning that fish later that night and they found a baby seal inside that fish's stomach. Pretty wild, but broomtail grouper is not really our target species for this trip, but they are here, so you just never know. But as any solid self-respecting angler should, we get right down to business. So look at this, love this. We've been here for 20 minutes. We're getting our tackle ready in here. And Jeff and the boys are all out here already getting the kayaks loaded, getting everything ready to go so that tomorrow in the morning, we just basically wake up and go. There's no loading up, launching, no delays. Mike's been bragging about just kind of what a tight operation these guys run and uh, I'm already kind of seeing the evidence of that. This is going to be good. No time to waste. This type of fishing is still relatively foreign to me, so I had to rely heavily on Mike, Nick, and Jesse to tell me what to bring. We begin gearing up our rods and organizing our tackle in the crates that we'll drop in our kayak each day. Some of the tackle I'm very familiar with, such as vertical jigs, or flat falls as you West Coasters like to call them. I've used the same technique for a wide variety of fish from Florida to Panama to Hawaii. Oh, think I need some of a leader? No, I like it like that. I think 14 inches is the, the, the perfect amount, actually. 
Big swim baits, on the other hand, are new to me in the offshore arena, but they're basically just upsized versions of the freshwater stuff that I use back home. We'll be rigging them two ways, on heavy jig heads to target fish down deeper, and the longer baits we'll put on big, weedless hooks to run through the kelp without getting snagged. Stick baits are the other big staple here. These are hard, lipless baits that swim erratically right under the surface when retrieved or with long sweeps of your rod. Jeff tells me that both yellowtail and the bigger calicos simply cannot resist it. I hit up Carl's Bait and Tackle online to gear up before coming out here. By joining Carl's Club, I get to save 30% on all of my tackle purchases, making it my first go-to stop anytime I need lures or terminal tackle for a trip. I'll throw a link down below in case anyone wants to check it out. They carry just about everything. With our rods rigged up and our tackle organized, it is time to settle in for the night. Alarms are set for 5 a.m. and we're aiming to have pongas in the water by first light. Alright, so we're here rigging up, just rigging up, some good baits, just rigging, oh, hold up. Celebratory tequila shot, get us in the mood as we finish rigging up. Took side, salud, cheers, here's to a killer few days of fishing. Woo! What is that? Well, that's that's weight. That is dangerous. What is that? Absolutely. 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 Absolut